Hey, Cut the Shit listeners. You can find every episode on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Go check us out. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Cut the Shit, a podcast series that aims to take a closer look at the impact of the IT industry, both the good and the bad. Cut the Shit is brought to you by Plow Networks, a managed IT services company based just outside Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Brian Link, COO here at Plow, and I'll be your host for this series. I'll ask questions, and with the help of our guests, try to dig deep on some of the key challenges we all face dealing with IT. So with that, let's cut the shit and get started. On today's episode, I am super excited to give you the first of two conversations I've had with colleagues from our support desk, Hannah Poston and Ryan Vanneman. I asked Hannah and Ryan to come on the podcast to help give you guys an insider's view of who works on our support desk, how they think about the work they do, and what lessons you can learn to make your internal IT efforts more effective. So first up is Hannah Poston. Hannah joined Plow back in the spring and currently serves as one of our service desk analysts, where she has responsibility for providing first-line support across a range of services for our clients. Hannah has almost eight years experience working in IT help desk environments, and during that time, she has covered a variety of industries and supported all types of technologies. During our conversation, I asked Hanna about her transition from being a history major in college to working in IT support. What are some of the key success factors in getting up to speed in IT and how she handles the stress and occasional monotony of IT support work? This is a great conversation and I really enjoyed learning more about Hanna and hearing her perspective on things. And I'm sure you will too. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Hanna Poston. Hannah, welcome to Cut the Shit. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Good. Thanks for taking time. I appreciate you spending some time with us here. This should be fun. Um, okay. I, I don't know you real well. I know you a little bit, so I'm looking forward to kind of getting to know you through this process, um, as well as, of course, our listeners <clears throat> getting to know you. So before we dive into the meat of the discussion, uh, how about we start with you? Give us an example of the most interesting use of technology or a hack um, that you've seen or experienced or heard recently, um, either from clients or colleagues or your own personal experience. Sure. I think the best thing that I've used um, probably ever has been the Apple AirPods. Um, I have bought every single other brand. They do not work as well. They've changed how I do my meetings. They change how I've done my IT support. Um, I love them. I think they're great. They never fail. They have changed my life. I mean, as someone who's on them all day, pretty much exactly. every day, right? So, exactly. Well, how do you, so let me ask you a specific question. How do you deal with the battery life issue? Do you have more than one pair? I do. I have two. Okay. So you swap them out. Okay. That's going to say, that seems to be the only way I think to deal with it. If you're going to use them all the time. Yeah. I know. All right. So let's get to the main event. Um, Why don't you start, just give us a little bit of personal introduction, kind of your background. Um, You know, you can go as far back as you want and just kind of bring us up to speed on where you are today. Yeah. Um, Well, I'm Hannah Poston. Um, I live in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Um, It's a small town. Um, I am from Boston, but I moved to Nashville to go to school. I went to Lipscomb University. Um, After that, I did a little bit of accounting. I went to school for history. Um, I wanted to go to law school, and then I decided I did not want to do that. (laughs) Um, And so then I got into IT, um, and I started working for a small startup in Brentwood, and everything just kind of flourished since then. So Boston to Nashville, well, to Green Hills specifically, to Lipscomb, then to Lynchburg. So you've been going from big to small um, in, in your direction. What What's that been like? I mean, we'll get to the work stuff in just a second, but I'm just curious about that. So I'm a big animal person, and I do a lot of like animal rescue like when I'm not working on my free time. And so I really wanted to get land so I could have lots of animals, and that's why I moved to Lynchburg. That's the only reason why. <laughs> That makes sense. That makes sense. How close to town are you? Are you out like out and about or are you close to town? It takes about 30 minutes to get to like a grocery store. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're pretty remote. Yeah. I got you. I am, but I love it though. You got internet though, obviously. I do. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm a, a liberal arts major, uh, as well. So, um, start out as a, you were, you're a history major, you worked in accounting, then got into IT. That's not a normal path. So how and why did that happen? I'm interested to hear this story. 
So in the history department at Lipscomb, it's really small um, because it is a smaller school. And one of my friends that was in the history department, he got into IT working at the startup called G Squared. um, And he just randomly messaged me and he was like, I feel like you'd be so good at this and they'll train you and you can learn. And it's it's a good stepping stone. And I was nervous, but I was like, I really want to try it because I've always just been really technologically savvy. I'm that person in my family that like does everything for everybody. You're your support. You're the tech support for your family. Exactly. Yeah. So, and I, I just, I loved it. Like it, it opened up all these doors and then I decided to get into desktop and then that's when everything exploded. Gotcha. Okay. So you, you mentioned G square. That was your first job in it support. What was that experience like? I mean, try to try to walk yourself back there kind of to the beginning before you got kind of good at everything. What was, what, 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 what was it like at the beginning? Oh my gosh. It was kind of your standard call center environment. Um, I was not used to that. So it was definitely terrifying at first. Um, but it was, I had extensive training, which I really liked, um, it, like weeks of training. Um, and so once I, I'm one of those people that I have to just kind of jump in there and find my way. So after a few months, I was able to kind of get into it, but it took, it took a good six months to a year to like really like get what I was doing. So they were training you. Were you were you doing support for a specific uh, application or a product set out of the so gate? It was mobile mobile device management. So I basically just handled iPhones and iPads um, for a bunch of different clients, similar to what we do here, but just with mobile devices. Gotcha, gotcha. So you had to figure out were y'all using like some platforms or something to manage those, and you had to learn how to use those for configs and that sort of thing. Exactly, like AirWatch and things like that. So yeah. That's what we use. yeah. Okay. So, how long were you there? I was there on and off for probably three to four years. Okay. I I really loved it, but I wanted to move. I I didn't want to stay in Brentwood, so that's why I left. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, as you think back on that experience, what let's think about just kind of some takeaways from the from the work experience itself. What, what were some of the, maybe the do's and don'ts um, that you learned from that experience that, again, if you were going to share with either someone else getting into IT support or even, you know, a manager or someone kind of running an IT support team, what, what were some do's and don'ts that, that you could take away from that? I think the biggest do was just the people. Like, I worked with great people. They were so patient and willing to teach and very thorough. And that was the best thing. You know, I I wasn't nervous. I mean, I was, but I knew that I had support and I feel like that's the most important thing. Um, Just the support. Um, The training I I feel like was really long, which is good. And I feel like that's another do is to have extensive and thorough training. And that's something that I think we do really well here. Um, I feel like I, I definitely got the time and the patience that I needed. So training and just, being a team player, I think that's so important, especially when you're starting in IT and you don't really know what you're doing. You rely on your coworkers and your colleagues so much. So how did they organize the teams there? Um, were you in small groups? Was it what, what was the nature of the of the setup? Sure. So it was kind of similar to what we have here. We had like a, a few different teams um, that handled a bunch of different clients. So it just depended on which team that you were on. And the longer you were there, the more you would learn about the new clients. And then you'd be able to take on those new clients and join the different teams. I gotcha. Okay. Um, as you think about, you know, so, so let's fast forward. So you, you, you worked there, you worked at G squared for a while, then uh, looks like went to maybe a healthcare company for a bit and also at Black Rifle. So you've had a couple of different kinds of industries, not related, but IT, you know, is a through line through pretty much any company. Right. So um, I want to try to fast forward. Uh, we're not trying to do resume, re- resume review. So fast forward a little bit um, kind of to, maybe prior to joining plow. And as you think back on that sort of cumulative experience, what are kind of the three or four must haves from your perspective on being successful at doing it support? And that could be both you as an individual, but even maybe as a company, what, what are, you know, three, four things that you feel like, again, cross those environments were, were there commonalities or were, did each one do something that if you could put it all together would have been a, just a dynamite uh, support effort. Yeah, I think probably the biggest things I've learned like through through my past job experiences, especially when I went to 12 Stone and I started doing desktop support, 
Um, I just learned that you have to, I had to learn how to manage stress and how to prioritize my time. Um, that's something that really took a lot of time and effort to really get down. Um, and you, you have to be willing to help and willing to serve, you know, like we, we help people with technology all day. And so you have to be nice and willing to help. And I feel like that's, what's made me really successful is that like, I can, um, you know, my mom is from another country. And so I, I've grown up like helping her. And so I feel like I just kind of have that in me to where I just want to help people. And so that's the best part about this is helping people. Um, as far as the, as far as the structure or the things, the, the tools, if you will, that, that, um, that companies have made available, made available to you, what, what do you think has really helped the most? I mean, you mentioned training, obviously that, and having great folks is one of those ones that's obvious, but not easy, right? I mean, I mean, if you were to ask anybody, they would say, obviously, if you've got great people at your company, things are going to go much better. But are there, what about like, did you feel like there were specific processes or uh, systems or I won't say tricks, that's not right, but sort of techniques that, that any of the places you've worked had that really made a difference for you? Definitely. I think the biggest thing was building like a knowledge base. Um, when I worked at 12 stone, we didn't have anything, we didn't have documentation. And so I had to kind of build that and that changed everything because then I was able to have everything documented so I could give it to anyone and they'd be able to assist. Whereas before I had documentation, it was, I was doing everything on my own. Um, and that's something that I think we do so well here is like everything is documented and you you can follow it really clearly. And that's definitely helped me is having a really strong knowledge base. And so when you went to G squared, was there a pretty good knowledge base? Did that help you as a newbie? Oh, yes, for sure. Especially when you're brand new and like you don't even know how to sign into ticketing systems and you don't know how to get into virtual machines. And, you know, that all comes with uh, time. But when you're starting out, that's so important because you, you don't know these things off the top of your head when you're starting. Um, and so that was super crucial and you have to be quick, you know, because we're trying to help people as fast as possible because they have to get back to work. So right. the, the documentation is the most helpful thing. Gotcha. Okay. Um, you mentioned stress, um, and, and that's definitely part of the, uh, part of the job. Um, it support work certainly has its moments of, of high stress, but there's also these stretches of sort of routine work that could potentially get boring. Um, I mean, that, it's kind of has these two extremes, as, you know, that, that, that aspect to it. What, what tricks have you learned to stay engaged or to stay sane in the, in the time of high stress uh, during these kind of two extremes? Yeah. Um, honestly, I've had to learn that I can do the best to just do the best that I can. I always used to put so much pressure on myself. And that doesn't do anything. Um, and I had to learn to really rely on my team. Um, that was hard for me at first because I felt like I just had to do everything by myself and I wanted to do a good job. And I had to learn that you have to really rely on your team. And so that's that's also been a huge thing. And that's another reason why I love plows because when I was at Black Rifle, I was the only IT person in the entire building. And so that was stressful. And so I love having like a team here. <laughs> yeah. It's a little lonely too, right? When things are, when things are rough or boring, right? If you can kind of, you, you, misery loves company, but at the same time, so does boredom, right? <laughs> you right. got something else to talk to. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, kind of keeping on the theme of stress, uh, you know, I always like to ask this from people, but you know, what's a, can you think of a war story or, or maybe something, you know, kind of the a worst case scenario you've had to deal with uh, across your time in IT support, something that really sort of stands out? Probably the biggest thing is when COVID happened and we had to get everybody remote. That was that was probably one of the most stressful times because I, I had never really done that before. And so I had to create a virtual environment and then get every single person on the virtual environment in a matter of like seven days. Um, was this at the, uh, at, at the healthcare company or at black rifle? Okay. At the healthcare company. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was really interesting. And it, I mean, now that's, that's our way of life. Mo you know, like, so ev almost everyone's remote now. So it's so interesting how it's become like the norm. Right. Right. Um, all right. So now, you know, you've been with us for a bit, um, not too long, but, but long enough now that you're, you're kind of settled in what, what initially attracted you to plow? What, what, what brought you to us in the first place? Honestly, um, 
I went online and I read reviews and every single person said that working there was like the best job they've ever had and that it was an excellent like team environment. And that that just made me really want to come here because that's what I wanted so badly. Um, And they were right. (laughs) So Yeah. So coming from that solo environment, right, you were looking for a team. Yeah. Gotcha. So if you had a good friend who was looking for a job in IT, what, what would you tell them to look for? I mean, obviously, you've, you've, we, we've picked up on some some of those threads, right? Some team and some training. What, what else? Uh, what else would be? What, what else would you give? Give in that little package of advice? Oh my gosh! Um, you know, I I knew that I wanted to get into IT even before I started working at the call center, and I knew that it was going to be a long road. Um, and I just I had to be willing to start. I, I knew that I didn't know anything, and so I was willing to start at the bottom. Um, and like work my way up. And I, I really feel like it's, it's worked out well, you know, like I, I remember working at the call center being like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get into desktop. And, um, you know, ev- everything just happens. Like if you, if you try. And so I feel like being able to, um, learn and like receive all the information was also really helpful. I kind of just had to admit that, like, I didn't know what to do and I, that I had to just learn it, you know? <laughs> Well, tech can be humbling in that way, right? Because there's so <laughs> exactly. much uh, you can't know everything. It's impossible, right? Exactly. I mean, and so to start the beginning, you feel like it's just overwhelming, right? I mean, I, that I, in my shoes, where I am today, I still feel that way. I mean, it, I, every day something comes up. It feels like that I don't really know what is going on as far as the on the technical side. Like, I mean, I, I have an idea, but like, it's it's just so broad. Right. And so that's gotta be scary when you, when you sit in that support seat for the first time. Exactly. But, and I feel like with, you know, time I've learned like the best resources, like I love Reddit. That's where I get so much technical advice. (laughs) Um, and it's just other stuff like that, like different platforms and working with like different IT people and just, you know, collaborating back and forth. That's helpful too. Um, again, you've only been with us for, you know, a period of months, so you're still new, but what, you know, what have you seen so far that we do that you think other companies, if they were, if they were bird's eye view of what we're doing, what would you, what, what do you think they ought to copy? Let's see. Um, I feel like we're really organized and that's not something that I've seen in other places. Like we're extremely organized. All of our documentation is organized. Um, anything that you need, you can find it. And I love that. Um, and I also feel like it, you know, like I said, the team here is great. They all have a great attitude um, and they're always willing to help. So I love that too. All right. Um, so, so let's, let's think, think about what, what could, what could get, what could make cloud better. better. So, so when you think, think on, on, think, think back, back on some of your previous experience, experience um, what, what are, are one or two best practices, practices from the places you've worked previously that you think we at plow could or should adopt that could help us? Um, Okay, I will say something. So, and I still struggle with this. I feel like there's so many moving parts when it comes to plow. And I I still struggle with like, who does what you like, I I still feel like I don't know the a lot of the people here and like what they do. And like, people like in the knock team, like, I don't ever talk to them. So I feel like maybe we could do something to where everyone could kind of know who each other is. That way, if we need help, I hope that makes sense. No, it does. I mean, we've I do think working remotely is amazing in so many ways, but it makes this part harder. I, I, I do. We, we've really struggled with that on how do we, I mean, cause we're not even that big, right? We're like 35, 40 people. And what you just said as the chief operating officer makes me kind of like, Oh my God, we're, we're, we're doing something wrong here. But be, I do think this is a challenge that lots of companies are having um, who are like us. I mean, we're, we're not 100% remote. We, I would consider us hybrid because some people work in the office, some some work at home. But we're we're definitely more remote than in office. If you go to the office on any given day, you definitely won't see 35 people there. You might see five or 10, depending on the day, right? And unless we're having a meeting or something, that's a good um, that's a good thing to um, to take away because I do think we got to figure that out. Um, it makes me worried also that. And this this is a broader problem, I think, for anybody in in IT. Um, what if an issue comes to you that you don't know exactly how to handle, 
and you're not as familiar with your compadres in the other areas, it might make, it doesn't mean you wouldn't get to them eventually, but it might make it make you not as fast, which is, as you said, right, trying to solve problems quickly is what we're after. They're almost always situations where people are struggling to do their work. That's why they're calling um, or emailing or whatever. Um, so, okay, that's one. Uh, that's that's a good one. Any Anything else that you can think of in terms of best practices from the past that you, you would, if you were, well, you are, you're sitting with me, that you'd tell me you think we ought to do? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I There's so many things that we do well. So it's, it's difficult for me to think of things that we don't do well. Um, because the plow has been like nowhere I've ever worked. And that, that's why I love it so much. You know, like uh, the managers, um, they do such a good job of managing without, you know, micromanaging, which is also something that I love, but that, you know, so. Okay. That's fair. Um, so when you think about, I mean, again, hadn't been with us that long, but long enough to kind of get to know the place and figure out the folks and that sort of thing. Um, when you think about the future, and, and and I don't mean like way out, but you know, the next two, three years, what excites you about the future, particularly your future as it relates to Plow? Sure. Um, I definitely feel like it's going to grow. I mean, I, I, I can already see that. Um, and I'm excited to see where it's going to go. Um, I learned, so I'm on the auto task team. And so the past few weeks I've been learning Newport um, and working in that uh, queue and that ticketing system. And so that's been so exciting because it's like a brand new world. Um, and it's also exciting being able to work in both queues because then I can help out whenever needed. Um, so that's been really, I love that. I love that I got to learn both ticketing systems. Good deal. Kind of on the flip side, and this may be a harder question to answer, but is there anything that scares you or makes you nervous about the future? Oh my gosh. Um, sometimes, I mean, sometimes I wonder where it's going to go. Sometimes I wonder, you know, about um, like where our help desk will go and where IT support will go, but I'm excited. I feel like Nashville as a whole, like in tech is booming. And so I feel like this is a great place to be, you know? So I do want to circle back before we kind of wrap up. So what brought you to Lipscomb in the first place? How did you get from Boston to Lipscomb? I, I, I wanted to ask that, and I just kind of moved on. So um. Uh, so my dad lives in Franklin. Um, and so he was like, and I have three little brothers here. And so he was like, if you go to Lipscomb, um, we'll help pay for it. And I was like, I'll take it. <laughs> there, well, that's an easy answer. Yeah, that, that makes makes a lot of sense. A lot of sense. So what, was there was there a culture shock coming to Nashville? Um, what was that like? Was it a big transition for you? It, yes and no. I, I used to come here every month to visit my family. So I was used to Nashville. Oh, okay. So you already been and kind of, yeah, okay. Exactly. But I, okay. I miss living in like a big city. Like, it, you know, Nashville is a big city, but it's not at the same time. So I do miss like the conveniences of an actual big city. Well, and now you live in the country. So, exactly. you know, <laughs> you live, you live way outside of Nashville. Exactly. Yeah. You would have had to move to, I guess, the Berkshires or something for the equivalent in Massachusetts, right? right? right. So. Exactly. Um, all right. Well, uh, I always like to wrap up with something kind of uh, personal, non-work, not really personal, but um, I'm going to ask you, can you share something that you've read or watched lately that you think others ought to check out? I do not watch TV. Um, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> so I can't really answer that question. I'm so sorry. Do you own a TV? Even more important. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, okay. I just, I, I I have like kind of like a farm. So I have like chickens and stuff. So my free time when I'm not doing ID, like I'm out helping the animals. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. No worries. So something people ought to check out is is getting out and having a couple of chickens and taking care of those things, right? Oh, yeah. It, it's It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Well, Hannah, that's all I've got for you today. Um, thanks so much. I really appreciate you coming on Cut the Shit. It's been fun to get to know you and get to talk. Um, I'm thrilled that you're at Plow. We love having you, um, and we hope you'll stay for a really long time. Um, but I'll let you get back to work. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you were enjoying the podcast, we'd appreciate it if you would become a subscriber wherever you get your podcasts. And if you could rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, that would really help us out. Or you can just go old school and tell your friends, your family, your colleagues, and hell, anybody else who you think might want to hear something like this to listen in. If you're on social media, make sure to follow us on TikTok, at Cut the Shit Pod, all one word, where we post lots of clips from the podcast. And last but not least, 
You can also watch the YouTube version of the show on our YouTube channel at Plow Networks. Until next time, take care and have a great day.